So there's our beautiful bow front tower, built by Erno Goldfinger for the GLC in 1984. It was a masterpiece for the whole of Europe. They came from every part of Europe to see it. And it's still a masterpiece, 20, 40 years later. Now this is private land, how can this be private land? This is a road. Steve has turned it into a private estate. We're going to have a gated poplar. Now that new building there in the distance was the school. But they ran it down and then abandoned it. So it ran down. And now somebody's making a profit. Who's getting the kickback from selling the land? That's not popular. Now these flats that are being built between these two blocks have just been put in on their gardens without any consultation, blocking the light from everybody's windows. No one will get any light from the sun until midday. Then you'll be lucky if you're facing the right way. So that's sacrilege when we've got the highest density of population even higher than Belgium in the UK. And no one stopped them. No one could stop Steve doing that. So all these kickbacks he's getting from the builders must be huge. He's going to have an island in Hawaii somewhere. And there's another one going up behind this building. So this block of flats was our pub, our local pub. Now I believe that uh, the planning regulations won't allow a change of ownership. You can't change the ownership, uh, the designation to build to ha homes from a pub. So it's now been ghettoized for families, not social housing. Social housing is for London's workers who can't afford the normal rent to live in London. And they work for the rich. That's their job. Now this was a beautiful little park that you could, that nice calm green park. And now it's been turned into a playground. We've lost the green. We've had, there's plenty of pitches for uh, football that they've built. And so they've uh, just covered it over and, and built this. They want us to exercise in public instead of the gym. This is an old 60s socialist. So all of these windows are made out of combustible PVC. So if there's a house fire, the air between the double glazing expands like a paper bag and it pops. And there's a jagged hole in the middle letting in the air, so it fans the fire and it doesn't go out. It guts the whole flat. So there's Belfront Tower. I live up there, the 20th floor. It goes to the 25 floors. Now we've got playgrounds in our uh, curtilage, which they haven't touched, never done them up. So they've d they fenced off these people's back gardens without a door, without a gate. So they're trapped if there's a fire in their kitchen and they can't get out the kitchen door. Now they've put these new entry systems on these blocks. The stairs were open to the... were open, there was no door here. So you come running down the stairs with one breath of fresh air, because that's all you get when there's a fire, if there's smoke here. And they can run out to the road to get the fresh air. Now this is being blocked off to half the width, which is illegal, and there's no push bar to open it. They have to find a little button in the dark. And the button's not lit to open the uh, magnetic door lock. They could have put that entry system on the wall and kept the double doors. But no one cares. No one reads the regulations. This is what we're up against here in Poplar in Te Hamlets because everyone now is bribed by the social landlords because they provide the well-paid jobs. So no one in the council offices they're going to stand up to them and stop them. And pros let alone prosecute them for unlawful evictions. There's only been one prosecution ever by the council for unlawful eviction in its history. 
So here we come. These are beautiful steel windows with glass down the bottom. Opaque glass. Now it's just plastic. It will burn like a, like a bonfire. And they've been replaced with more plastic 12 years later. Now the, the tragedy is that it doesn't stop the sound or heat loss any better than a curtain because the air gap is still only 2 centimetres. You need 10 centimetres of air gap to stop the 50 decibels of sound to reduce 90 decibels, which is the motorway noise, down to 50, which is the normal sound in a room. So here we are, beautifully landscaped estate. This is Balfront Tower, built by Uno Goldfinger for the GLC. No money was spared. Now these underground garages that need this ventilation, get that through these holes in the bricks, they're going to fill this in with soil, because they, they have to have it flat. Now those people who shop at Waitrose, every time you bought a plastic bag, it paid for our new garden on top of the garages. It's about uh, five me two metres deep, full of amazing plastic underneath there. <laughs> who designed that? It's crazy. So I'm going to put on uh, a uh, zoom lens, but we'll, we'll show you the flat with wide angle. So here we go. It's six flats long, 25 storeys high, and there's some three bedrooms in the middle that are two levels, but they're mainly one level. But there, there are nine lift levels. That's the lift tower on the edge there, I'll show you later. Now you can see here he's knocked out uh, the windows and put wood there to stop trespassers squatting in there. Now he intends to knock out all these windows because they haven't been painted. Now it's, the, it's a breach of contract not to paint our windows. The council never painted them for 10 years and he hasn't painted them for 8 years. So it, he's, he says it's more cost effective to replace the windows than to paint them. Now his mate in Ireland got the contract for all the windows that he replaced there. They were plastic windows and we had a fire in Caradale House and it burnt through the windows within half an hour when the building regulations require windows and walls of buildings over 30 metres tall to withstand fire penetration from the inside or collapse of the wall for two hours, not half an hour. <laughs>